Richard Sherman is going to be coming back. And this is really interesting because Hall of Fame player, quarterbacks are still nervous to throw in his area. He still will get a few picks a year. But the defense has played great without him. Great without him. And not only that, they have a new identity without him. They're a man-to-man coverage defense with some zone sprinkled in, as opposed to when he's on the field, they're basically pure zone. Um, So I'm not trying to lead you in a direction, but what are the pros and cons of Richard Sherman coming back? Man, I said it last year, bro. I said once they got rid of DeForest Buckner and people were saying, oh, we couldn't afford De- DeForest Buckner. Yes, you could. I said the tr- the move, the power move was to make, was to release Richard Sherman, save $12.9 million off the books. Don't yeah. re-sign Eric Armstead and give him that big money contract, save $6 million there. And then you could re-sign DeForest Buckner. They didn't want to do it, so they traded him away. I thought he was one year overdue to be gone. I thought they should have released him last year because of the injuries, because what happened in the Super Bowl and leading up to the Super Bowl, I've been saying all along that he's playing on his last legs. He's in the twilight of his career. Now, what Sherman does bring to the table, let's look at the pros, you know, professionalism, leadership in the locker room, uh, veteran, right? Like you said, he will get two or three interceptions a game and he does do a good job because he's so savvy in reading key defense. But at the end of the day, you can't really vouch for his cap number. It just doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And you pointed out, Grant, you made a great point. The defense has created identity without him playing more cover one. They're not playing cover three. And that's all due to what? Playing man-to-man coverage and learning how to scheme up plays based on the personnel that you have. And Saul is doing a really good job of adapting to the personnel. Now, he's not perfect. I mean, I don't think he should be doing cover one when you're playing against DK Metcalf. But overall, he's doing a nice job. Well, it's just so hard against the Seahawks because if you play cover, two, if you play too deep, then you're just going to get beaten by Russell Wilson running. So it's tough. Yeah. Um, but what I, what I want to say uh, in terms of Richard Sherman is I think it's a it's a it's a tough one because if say you you bring Richard Sherman back and you bench Emmanuel Mosley, all right? So quarterbacks are going to be more afraid to throw into Sherman's coverage than Mosley's coverage. That's true, but. The way I see it is Mosley can play man and zone. Brett can play man and zone. Sherman can. And I've seen how Robert Sala calls games with Sherman on the field. He doesn't want to expose Sherman. He, he, he wants to put Sherman in the best position to succeed. And that hurts the rest of the defense because that means calling cover three and cover four every single play. And while Richard Sherman, his numbers will look good at the end of the game because he's not getting targeted, everyone else gets burned because there's no disguise in your coverage. The quarterbacks know what's coming, and especially against good offenses with good quarterbacks, they just shred zone. If I mean, we saw it in the Super Bowl. So um, Richard Sherman coming back, he'll, he'd put up good numbers, but he would limit what Robert Sala could call, and I think the defense would get worse. There's no reason to switch up the secondary when they just shut down Michael Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. I don't see what Richard how he could possibly make it better than what it is right now. Yeah, great point. And piggybacking on what you just said on the scheme difference with Sherman in the lineup with him out of the lineup Sherman is always playing with a five to six yard cushion he's not protecting the sticks even if it's third and short so when you take that into account Sherman knows even Sherman knows that he'll get beat on a double move so he plays it safe period and also Robert Sala knows that Richard Sherman can't cover a deep over route or a crossing route on any down so that's why he's not calling man to man. And that's think about it. I mean, if he can defend a fade route because he's savvy and he can use press coverage at the line of scrimmage and use the sideline, but a deep over route, that's just a, that's just a race that he's going to lose. You know, that's just a race he's going to lose or a crossing route or a cross stop and go back the other direction. These are all things he can't cover. So he always has to have zone help in the middle, zone help underneath. It's just, it puts everyone else in a bad position. If I were Robert Sala, I'd say, Sherman, you're back. Great. You're our number three outside corner. If Emmanuel Mosley gets hurt or Jason Fred gets hurt, we're going to you because we can't trust Akello. But right now, we got we got a good thing going with Jason Verrett and Emmanuel Mosley, and we're not going to mess with it. It's working. Mm-hmm. That's what I feel. So, Sherman, yeah. thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Don't call us. We'll call you.